goes by Op, and Op is uh, my oldest, closest, <laughs> dearest friend. I've known him since 1978 or 9. Um, and uh, he teaches full time, he's tenured at Modesto Junior College. He just is winding down a one year sabbatical where he spent most of that time in Indonesia. Uh, his creative nonfiction has been published in iMagazine and it's forthcoming in Matador. Uh, he is a graduate student in the MFA program at Sierra Nevada College. So uh, please help me welcome Optimism One. Hey, thanks everybody. Um, also, I, I've got waters for all the readers, so if you didn't get one, they're up here. Just grab them. Um, and anyway, just want to thank everybody for coming. Thanks to the Democracy Center. Thanks to Lee, of course, for organizing this. Um, and to my friend Lou for coming all the way from New York City. So this is a pretty special moment. And as Lee mentioned, um, I, this piece just got accepted to Matador, and so I'm going to try it out. It's called Skype Love. I have a serious problem. I'm living in Bali, and when I talk to my girlfriend Courtney long distance on Skype, I spend most of my time looking at that little one inch by one inch square in the bottom right corner to see what I look like while I'm talking. <laughs> I mess with my hair, pulling it up, out, back. I bug out my eyes and squint. I twist my lips into Jim Carrey-like distortions. I practice my how are you feeling poster faces, happy, sad, glad. And I swing my head from left to right like I'm watching a tennis match to remind myself which side is my best side. And if you want to know, it's my right, which better hides my crooked father fixed nose and what might be a cancer splotch on my left cheek. <laughs> Of course, instead of my eyes moving with my head, they rotate in their sockets to make sure I'm never out of sight, as if I'm filming my own YouTube video of Tupac's All Eyes on Me. <laughs> it's like getting a haircut and talking to the mirror, sometimes glancing at the reflection of the barber while seeing how you look most of the time. Or it's like taking a group picture and instantly looking for yourself to make sure you look okay. Screw the others, and if you don't look good, by golly, it's time for a retake. Am I the only one this self-centered? After all, I don't get this opportunity, or rather I don't take this opportunity to sit and stare at myself in the mirror for extended periods of time. That would be vain, of course, and I certainly don't want to be that guy. I'm even more self-absorbed when I'm naked. Oh shit, damn it, oh man, I said. What happened, Courtney asked. We had just started our Skype shower. <laughs> I broke my keyboard, I said, trying to snatch up the components. Like most showers in developing countries, the distance between the shower area and the toilet in my apartment was about two feet and without any boundary, barrier, or curtain. Basically, water just goes everywhere, which is why I had originally placed a kitchen towel over my now busted and now wet keyboard. What? How did that happen? She asked. Now, with one foot out of her shower and leaning, head cocked, and face squinted towards the screen to hear me over the roar of her shower head, I propped up my iPad and keyboard on the back of the toilet, and it slid off and bounced on the seat and then the ground. I lost three keys, the tab button, the caps lock, and the cue. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, I said, propping, propping it up in the exact same place, attempting to act like I wasn't pissed off, wondering if I'd be able to fix it. I returned to the task at hand, lathering up my frayed purple scrunchie and scrubbing myself while sometimes watching my girlfriend do the same. Meanwhile, I tried not to make a face as I tensed my abs, hoping that some definition still showed through on the grainy screen, which unfortunately I could barely see from where I was standing. This is just one of the problems with a long distance relationship, trying to create some form of intimacy from 10,000 miles away. So it's not just my own narcissism that's an issue. I had started seeing Courtney about 10 days before I moved to Bali for five months. So I broke it off, wanting to continue a relationship, not wanting to continue a relationship with so much distance, with so little personal contact being the foundation of our relationship. We both struggled to let go at first, but eventually we both went silent. Going home for Christmas, however, proved a greater challenge and we couldn't resist Two weeks later, I was off to Bali again, but this time we decided to stay in touch since I was only going to be gone for a month and a half. Actually, we agreed to talk every two weeks, 
but we haven't gone more than two days without talking to each other. Our last Skype date was on Valentine's Day. Well, it was the middle of the next day for me, Mark, February 15th, and I had to shut my curtains to act like it was dark enough to warrant lighting the owl candle that matched hers at home where it was 9 p.m. She was wearing the necklace I had sent to her classroom that day, a silver Annabeck classic double floating O, along with a dozen peach-colored roses. The necklace looks great on you, I said, finally looking at her more than me. Oh, thank you, she replied, reaching up to caress what I saw as my initials. I love it. I really love it. Thanks. Thank you.